Hi everyone and welcome to my channel and in this video we'll dive into the fascinating world of deep learning and explore how to build a powerful image classifier using PyTorch. But before we jump in, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell icon to stay updated with our latest tutorials. The dataset used in this project is the CIFAR 10 dataset. CIFAR 10 stands for the Canadian Institute for Advanced Research, where the dataset was originally created. It is a popular benchmark dataset in the field of computer vision and deep learning. The CIFAR 10 dataset consists of 60,032 times 32 color images in 10 classes, with 6,000 images per class. There are 50,000 training images and 10,000 test images. The dataset contains images across 10 classes, each representing a different object or category. The classes are as follows. Airplane Automobile Bird Cat Deer Dog Frog Horse Ship Truck Each image in the CIFAR 10 dataset is 32 pixels in height and 32 pixels in width. Additionally, each image is a color image consisting of three color channels, red, green, and blue. The CIFAR 10 dataset is commonly used for benchmarking and testing image classification algorithms and models. It provides a diverse set of images with relatively low resolution, making it computationally tractable for experimentation while still posing interesting challenges in classification. Researchers and practitioners use the CIFAR 10 dataset to develop and evaluate various machine learning and deep learning algorithms, particularly convolutional neural networks, CNNs, for image classification tasks. It serves as a standard dataset for assessing the performance of models in terms of accuracy, generalization, and robustness. Despite its relatively small size and low resolution, the CIFAR 10 dataset presents several challenges, including class imbalance, variations in lighting and backgrounds, and the presence of similar-looking objects within different classes. These challenges make it an ideal dataset for testing the capabilities of image classification models under real-world conditions. Overall, the CIFAR 10 dataset serves as a foundational resource for researchers, students, and practitioners in the field of computer vision, enabling them to explore and advance the state of the art in image classification and related tasks. Our journey begins with importing the necessary libraries for our project. The PY7ZR package is installed because it provides functionality to work with 7Z archives in Python. In the context of the provided code, it is used to extract image files from 7Z archives containing the CIFAR 10 dataset. Import OS provides functions for interacting with the operating system, such as navigating directories and manipulating file paths. Import Pandas as PD enables data manipulation and analysis by providing data structures like data frames. Import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT allows for data visualization through plotting functions. Import Seaborn as SNS enhances the visual appeal of matplotlib plots with additional styling options and high-level functions. Import PY7ZR provides functionality for working with 7Z archives, allowing extraction of files from this compressed format. Import Torch imports the PYTorch library, which is used for building and training neural networks. Import Torch.nn as NN provides access to PYTorch's neural network modules and functions for defining network architectures. Import Torch.optim as Optim enables the use of optimization algorithms, such as SGD or ADAM, for training neural networks. From TorchVision import transforms, models, 
provides tools for image pre-processing, transforms, and pre-trained models for computer vision tasks. From torch.utils.data import data loader, dataset offers classes and functions for creating custom datasets and data loaders to efficiently load data during training. From PIL import image provides functions for working with image files such as opening, manipulating, and saving images. From sklearn.mo Dale Selection Import Train Test Split facilitates the splitting of datasets into training and testing subsets for machine learning model evaluation. From sklearn.metrics Import Confusion Matrix Classification Report Accuracy Score Rock Curve or Precision Recall Curve provides evaluation metrics for assessing the performance of classification models. From sklearn.pr a processing import label binarize supports the conversion of categorical labels into binary format for certain evaluation metrics. From iter tools import cycle provides functions for iterating over sequences in a cyclic manner often used in plotting multiple curves or colors in a cycle. Next, we'll load and preprocess the CIFAR 10 dataset, which contains 60,000 images across 10 classes. This code snippet walks through the directory, Kaggle input, and prints the path of each file it encounters. This code snippet extracts training images from a 7z archive located at train archive path and saves them to the directory specified by train extract path. The function extract 7z archive takes the archive path and the extraction path as arguments, then uses py7zr library to extract all files from the archive into the specified extraction directory. This code loads the trainlabels.csv file into a data frame using pandas. The head function displays the first few rows of the data frame, giving a preview of the data's structure and content. This code defines a custom dataset class custom dataset inherited from torch.utils.data.dataset. It initializes with data dir, labels df, and optional transform. It implements methods lay to return the length of the dataset and get it in to fetch and transform the image and its corresponding label at a given index. It maps class labels to numerical values and applies transformations if specified. These lines define data preprocessing transformations using transforms.compose, including resizing images to 224, 224, converting them to tensors, and normalizing pixel values. Then, they create a custom dataset train dataset using the defined transformations, along with the extracted image path and labels data frame train labels df. Now, let's split our dataset into training and validation sets to evaluate our model's performance. We'll use the train test split function to divide the data, ensuring our model generalize well to unseen images. These lines split the dataset into training and validation sets using train test split with a test size of 20% and a fixed random state for reproducibility. Then, they create data loader objects train loader and wall loader for the training and validation sets, respectively, with a batch size of 32 and shuffling enabled for the training data. With our data ready, it's time to train our convolutional neural network using the powerful RaceNet 18 architecture. We define the model architecture specify the loss function and optimizer and train the model over multiple epochs. This code defines a convolutional neural network, CNN, model using the nn.module class from pytorch. 
It initializes the model with a RaceNet 18 backbone, where the final fully connected layer is replaced with a new one to match the number of output classes specified by num classes. The forward method defines the forward pass of the model, passing the input X through the RaceNet backbone and returning the output. This code instantiates an object of the CNN model class created previously, specifying num classes as the number of output classes. This model object is initialized with the RaceNet 18 architecture and a custom final fully connected layer tailored for the specific classification task with 10 output classes. This code segment defines the loss function nn.crossentropyloss and optimizer optin.adam for training the model. It then iterates over a specified number of epochs during which the model is trained on the training data. Within each epoch, the model is set to training mode model.train and for each batch of images and labels from the training loader, the optimizer's gradients are zeroed, forward pass is performed to get the model predictions, loss is computed using the defined criterion, backward pass is executed to compute gradients and finally, the optimizer updates the model parameters using these gradients through the optimizer.step method. After training, we evaluate our model's performance using various metrics and visualization techniques. We analyze the confusion matrix, precision recall curves, and rock curves to assess the model's accuracy and robustness. This code segment evaluates the trained model on the validation dataset. It sets the model to evaluation mode, model.aval, iterates through the validation loader to make predictions on validation images, computes the accuracy of the predictions against the ground truth labels, and prints out the validation accuracy. This code segment extracts a batch of validation images and their corresponding labels from the validation data loader. Then, it evaluates the model's predictions on these validation images. The model's AVAL method is used to switch it to evaluation mode and torch.no grad ensures that gradients are not computed during inference to save memory and computation. Finally, the model's outputs are obtained and the predicted labels are determined by taking the maximum value along the predicted class probabilities. This code segment calculates the confusion matrix based on the true labels, while labels and the predicted labels, while predicted. It then visualizes the confusion matrix using a heat map plot with annotations where the x-axis represents the predicted labels, the y-axis represents the true labels, and each cell's value indicates the number of occurrences. Finally, it sets labels and titles for the plot before displaying it. This code snippet performs the following tasks. 1. Binarizes the multi-class labels, while labels, into a binary format, while labels bin, using one-hot encoding, where each class is represented as a binary column. 2. Computes precision and recall values for each class using the precision recall curve function from scikit-learn, which calculates precision and recall at different probability thresholds for positive class predictions. 3. Plots precision recall curves for each class on a single figure where precision is plotted against recall. Each curve represents the precision recall trade-off for predicting a specific class. 4. The plot is customized with a title, axis labels, and a legend indicating the class associated with each curve. The colors of the curves are cycled through a predefined set of colors for better visualization.
This code segment accomplishes the following. 1. The multi-class labels, while labels, into a binary format, while labels bin, using one hot encoding, where each class is represented as a binary column. 2. Computes the receiver operating characteristic, rock, curve, and the area under the rock curve, AUC, for each class using the rock curve and op functions from scikit-learn. Rock curve represents the trade-off between true positive rate, sensitivity, and false positive rate, one specificity, for different probability thresholds. 3. Plots the rock curve for each class on a single figure, where false positive rate is plotted against true positive rate. Each curve represents the rock curve for predicting a specific class, colored differently for visual distinction. 4. Adds a diagonal reference line indicating random guessing and customizes the plot with labels, title, and legend indicating the class associated with each rock curve and its corresponding AUC value. 5. The figure is displayed using plt.show. Finally, we use our trained model to make predictions on the test images and create a submission file. By extracting and pre-processing the test images, we generate predictions and save them in a submission CSV file for evaluation. This code extracts images from a compressed 7z archive file, test.7z, located at Kaggle input Cifar 10 and saves them to a specified directory test extract path. The extracted images are then moved to a subdirectory named test within the previously defined extraction path. This code segment loads the extracted images from the test directory, preprocesses them using specified transformations, resizing to 32 times 32 pixels and converting to tensors and then iterates over each image to make predictions using the trained model. It creates a data frame containing the image IDs and predicted labels, which are then saved to a CSV file for submission. If no image files are found in the test directory, it prints a message indicating that no images were found. And there you have it. We've successfully trained a convolutional neural network with PyTorch for image classification. I hope you found this tutorial helpful in understanding the fundamentals of deep learning and PyTorch. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more tutorials. Until next time, happy coding.